Welcome to this episode of Movement Medicine Podcast. Thank you for, to those who have tuned into the previous episodes. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content so far. We appreciate the feedback and the comments that you've been giving. Please continue to share with your friends, your family, and your colleagues. We thank our partners. So it's the Fit India Movement, the Back to Fitness Clinic, which is the clinic that Rajat runs, La Ultra the High, which is the race that Rajat puts together in Ladakh, and the Moving Mountains Within Film, which is the film about the 10th edition of La Ultra the High. So I'll hand over to Rajat. He will introduce today's guest. Thank you, everyone, for watching yet another episode of Movement Medicine. And today we have Dr. Raja Rami Reddy from Hyderabad. Thank you, Dr. Reddy, for coming on board. Thank you, Raja. Thank you, Darren. So, Dr. Reddy, right away, jumping into your academic and professional background, please tell us about it. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm actually I'm a doctor. I'm an ophthalmologist. I specialize in vitreoretinal surgeries. I'm a, well, a retina specialist. So, uh, vitreoretinal surgeries they deal with the back side of the eye. Okay. I have done my MBBS from uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, and I have done my post graduation there, as well as my specialist registrar uh, at at, uh, at uh, RP Center of Thermic Sciences. So total stint in Delhi was for eleven years, and uh, after that I moved back to Hyderabad. Hyderabad is uh, where uh, uh, in two thousand three, from ninety two to two thousand three, I was there in Delhi. Two thousand three, moved back to Hyderabad. In those days, there were not to many corporate hospitals uh, you know uh, that would give you a job you are ex- you are expected to build your practice doctors traditionally like uh, you know slow brick and mortar thing so i joined as a consultant in couple of hospitals as a specialist in vitreal surgery 7 years 6 years subsequently i felt uh, i needed to uh, start a center that specifically caters to vitreoretinal diseases and surgery so i started this hospital called new retina eye care institute in hyderabad in 2010 we just finished 10 10 years of starting the hospital in, uh, this month april 2020 2020 and uh, the the center new retina has been uh, had had a very good steady growth initially and of course later on there was an exponential growth in the hospital uh and i was finding it difficult to manage both the administrative affairs as well as the you know patient care and uh, it is reached uh, uh, and also as well as vicarious responsibility for the entire hospital so i started looking for a to divest the equity at that time find partners which i subsequently did in 2017 and since then it's been a uh, smooth sailing for me i'm in uh, i could uh, i concentrate on patient care the rest of the other stuff is taken care by my partners in law firm so my that's about my professional background and uh, so. fantastic thank you very much so can you tell us about your fitness and exercise journey yeah fitness and exercise journey there were uh, two peaks of it first initially as a i was an i was obese as a child you know from uh, probably between 11 to 13 years of age that's i was a base and at that around the same time i was joined in a boarding school in hyderabad hyderabad public school begum pet it is at that time that that has changed my perspective there we had to compulsory there is a wake up call at 5 o'clock in the morning and you have to do a phys- physical training and because of my obesity and all i was there was some bullying around so i was very determined to do something i was also we were also expected to pick up a sport in the evening so to play uh, i really tried my hat at uh, football but i was delegated to the duty of a goalkeeper where there is not much movement involved so at the, it is a, it was around that time to reduce weight that i have uh, started running at the class probably at the age of uh, 11 when i was in ninth standard uh, eighth ninth standard and i used to run about 5 kilometers daily in that that time that has resulted in a good Then uh, I lost about probably 10 kilos at that that age, and uh, once and for two years I was running and I was there a part of the cross country club for my uh, cross country team for my house in school, and after 10th I was pulled out of the school. I was pulled out, I was out of the boarding school because we had to concentrate for our entrance exam to get into medical school and all. That's when that uh, journey has uh, stopped the fitness journey for two years. in the boarding school it was a good memorable one i think that i would call that as a base training so far uh, subsequently uh, as i told you my uh, regarding 
I have a lot of uh, I was into a lot of stress while looking for this uh, equity for the hospital, and you know there was delegate due diligence happening. And at around that time, uh, while I was looking for equity in my hospital, I, there was a lot of stress. That time, I felt there was need to start running again, some sort of physical activity. Uh, in 2017 is when when we uh, that's when I started my uh, fitness journey once again. Uh, initially, did a uh, close to a house, five kilometers loop, close to a house uh, for about three four months, and then uh, I did a little half marathon in Hyderabad and without much training, without much training, and I did good. I mean, I finished with two hour forty eight minutes. That was a uh, that's how the journey started. And trained half marathon, which I did reasonably well. Subsequently, I joined this Hyderabad Runners Group, where I met Mr. Rajesh Vecha, and uh, and we were the we used to train. I trained for the group for three four seasons, ran a couple of marathons. I learned a lot of things about uh, running uh, by training with the Hyderabad Runners Group, both strength training as well as long runs, and a uh, lot of mentors who were at, uh, with various capabilities that you need then. And uh, they taught you a lot of things. And uh, I've done three, four uh, full marathons after training with the uh, Hyderabad runners. The last one was in Mumbai this year. I think that was my best, four uh, thirty, four hour thirty minutes. And uh, and also a half marathon this year in Club Run in Hyderabad. That is about one hour fifty eight minutes. So there has been a. I shaved off probably forty minutes of uh, my time in this full marathon this year. So that's uh, that's how the thing. And uh, the last year in and half uh, the Ironman Goa, I did the, there was a relay team in which we part. So I did the cycling leg of uh, half Ironman in Goa. That was also a good experience. And the uh, website. So there were two peaks. One in my childhood, about eighth ninth standard, and now again uh, probably after two close to after twenty two years of gap. Again since three years, I'm regularly doing it. I don't intend to leave it here now, and I plan to carry it forward. I plan to. I'm training for a half Ironman sometime this year or next year, whenever it is there. Doctor Reddy, what if I told you that you're capable of doing four-hour marathon? Yes, I think I I would believe that it's possible. Probably, you know, I plan to do one full marathon a year. So probably, I think I'm aiming for again coming to Mumbai next year. I don't think any event will be conducted any time before that because of COVID and all. So I, I think I believe I can do it. Probably. So, Doctor Reddy, if I may, what is your half marathon time? Your best time? Uh, one hour fifty-eight minutes. That's also fifty-eight. Okay. So here's the deal. At the next Mumbai marathon, you are going to do a sub four-hour marathon. It is going to happen. So, Doctor Reddy, uh, it was way back in '93 that I had a retinal detachment of my own. Uh, so the right side worse than the left and stuff like that. Uh, and I was told by the surgeon that I should not be doing any more of running. I'm not planning to go to the Olympics, so why should I do strength training, running? And the interesting part is I've done a lot more longer running after that and a lot more strength training after that. Now, the question to you, Dr. Reddy, is most of our colleagues, at the drop of a hat, tell patients to be inactive, to stop doing things, stop living their lives, their passions. What do you say, sir, about that? Yeah, I, I think in, uh, there's too much emphasis is uh, being given to, you know, especially retinal condition that you should not lift weight, they should not bend forward. I think that they are misplaced. I mean, the retinal detachment happens because of vitreous condensation in the eye and pulling the retina. The retinal tears form and then subsequent retinal detachment. So uh, there is, if you have a retinal detachment, till you need a surgery, you are advised to take rest. Suppose you diagnose with retinal detachment. You no, know, there may be a four, five, six days time till you meet a retinal specialist and you go to the table for surgery. That that period you are expected to take rest. And also, if you take a, if you get a retinal tear and for a three to four weeks you are expected to take, uh, you are expected to consult frequently rather than take, take any rest. Apart from that, there is no other role for uh, too much of rest in case of any uh, retinal. Uh, diseases or even diabetic retinopathy people have a lot of diabetics and uh, have uh, who come with bleeding inside the eye vitreous hemorrhage they uh, again quite a few doctors they insist on taking rest with uh, large amount of pillows that is actually causes more harm than any good it's better they resume their physical activity at the earliest all these diabetics rather than advising uh, rest 
per se in eye conditions especially in retinal detachment if you're going in for a surgery you require some rest and of course after surgery you require some rest and apart from that i think there is uh, no other you don't require any so you're expected to carry on uh, all your uh, activities as it is yeah in fact uh, more the diabetics uh, i'm telling you before so we have a lot of we do a lot of diabetic vitrectomies and all uh, that we do you know so Uh, traditional surgery with the, most of them advise a lot of rest which they feel it's hampering for them they come most of them are keen to when do we get back to our routine of walking and this thing so I advise them to get back to their work sooner than just just like this lockdown in covid times uh, that kind of preventive measures won't help i think it's better that we sooner or later you know controlled way release it rather than trying to stop altogether so dr reddy do you think because of your own personal fitness journey your practice has changed compared to maybe some of your colleagues who aren't as active as you are yes yes definitely you, uh, you don't get so uh, frustrated at work or irritated you know you manage you are you are capable of doing a more disciplined life you are uh, capable of doing multitasking become man better manager uh, at work and family uh, and uh, you are more calm and composed and uh, lot many other psychological benefits that uh, this running gives you uh, that you know that slowly the coworkers generally tend to uh, there is they, they see a change in what you do and they understand it's all related to the fitness journey and you also learn to set small goals apart from your work and family most of them they have they and you also learn to respect your body you know what it can do for you if you take care of the body and uh, you also learn to eat mindfully rather uh, than you know uh, binge eating so coworkers generally appreciate these changes and they carry on and try to uh, do it themselves later on they're okay dr reddy what about our patients so are you giving different advice to your patients versus your colleagues who are not as active is there a difference the uh, the uh, apart from the huge psychological benefits that uh, physical activity gives you and uh, many intangible benefits that it gives you uh, especially our patients who are diabetics uh, they are they reduce their insulin requirement if they are physically active and also the quality of diabetic control is better with uh, with physical activity and also reduce risk of developing any long term complications of diabetes <laughs> and most importantly they encourage the diabetics are uh, it encourages the diabetic to take take charge of their disease and more in control of their disease so definitely uh, physical fitness for all most of the comorbidities like diabetes hypertension obesity it helps them in many other ways uh, directly in control of their insulin requirements drops suddenly so there are many benefits in the patients have apart from the huge psychological advantages which other healthy adults also derive uh, from running like yeah from the sai you call it could you also comment on strength training as well yes yes uh, yeah that this is uh, strength training i would say uh, uh, this is one of the uh, i feel uh, the aerobic exercises offers way more uh, health benefits than a strength training does this i'm talking about patients or the other normal healthy adults we see in our community that most of the people who, whenever for them the physical fitness or activity means going to a gym and lifting weights they hardly do any aerobic exercises kind of a thing so for them my, my uh, anybody's advice would be to give a good amount of aerobic exercises in terms of running and cycling and also do a strength training but doing only strength training is uh, doesn't give you as much health benefits as compared to a uh, aerobic exercises but of course those who are into serious running or uh, cycling they need to simultaneously take uh, give a importance to strength training uh, the uh, both limbs upper limbs lower limbs as well as core so in terms of health benefit for patients i think they derive more health benefits from an aerobic training rather than a strength training for for those who are into serious into the sport i think strength training does play a very good part in uh, improving the performance in the long run thank you dr reddy now coming to misconceptions the myths that are out there would you please touch on a few that are there out in the society and people just don't know they're doing the wrong things they have wrong impression of things so please a few myth- myths that you can address 
and misconceptions out there, please. Thanks. Yeah, one of the misconceptions is that you need to have a lot of free time to pursue physical fitness. Most of the colleagues they say that you need to have a lot of free time to do all these things. But I think it's the other way around. Once you consider or something as very important, you automatically take time out from somewhere and give time to your uh, physical activity. So when you not have a lot of free time, you need to create time to give it uh, to pursue fitness. And uh, one the other misconception is that one needs to be physically fit to pursue hobbies like running and cycling. Uh, it's a journey, and uh, and each individual has to start the journey at some time or the other, irrespective of the baseline fitness. Once you start the journey and uh, uh, and you learn the ropes and you realize the scope for improvement, and the journey continues. So it's not that uh, you don't have the baseline fitness to start anything. Once you start the journey, automatically, gradually, your fitness improves, and then you know you uh, tremendous scope for improvement. So there is lack of baseline fitness is a common misconception people have, which I think they should uh, let go. And uh, irrespective of whatever fitness you have, you start the journey slowly. There is improvement. And uh, the other thing is that being physically active is also also doesn't give you immunity against all illnesses. You know, uh, so even runners, or cyclists, they should also have probably have an annual health checkup and once in a while, you know, once in a year to see whether any parameters have changed and you no. Know, Uh, to see how the things are going, I have seen many people that they have done a baseline uh, health examination four years back. Much has changed over the years. So even uh, apart from all the benefits, does give it doesn't give immunity completely. So even people, uh, do the annual health checkups and take care of their uh, bodies. The other misconception I told you about is that most of the people, the general public, they give too much training, at least in our community, to strength training only. They hardly put their heart and lungs to use. So unless you put heart and lungs to use, the the advantages of physical activity is not gained properly. So just as a final question, I wonder whether you could comment on how people can actually protect their eyes during exercise. So obviously, a lot of people, particularly if it's sunny, obviously they're wearing sunglasses, or if they're cycling, they're wearing protective glasses to protect anything going into their eye. Is there anything you could comment on that for us, please? Protective, especially cycling, of course, is a must. That you need to have a goggles that covers the sides of your eye uh, as well while you're cycling. Uh, but the other thing is, even while running, if you have to, if you're a presbyope like me, I mean, you cross forty, you need to look at your watch and. Uh, No, you can't see the correct readings of your watch, your mileage or speed. In that case, I think sometimes and uh, glasses uh, can sometimes uh, if they hamper your view and all. Uh, you can have a uh, your uh, goggles that you can have a you can powered goggles in your this thing and use while running. That will uh, help you to simultaneously protect you from the sun as well as look at your watch. You know, suppose you have a refractive error, a myope, a presbyo. the goggles can be made to that proximate prescription and then you can continue to use the glasses so for cycling i think is be more or less a must that you need to wear goggles and that too with which have a correct power that suits your uh, requirements for cycling for running i think it's uh, can some if you are uh, running during the day then it again becomes a must to wear glasses dr reddy has been brilliant now could you touch on something that you maybe wanted to talk about but we've forgotten to touch on see i would only say that i've been reading this book by uh, tim knox is uh, a tim knox about lore of running lore what of he running. says in his uh, final word is that there are no diseases that are caused by uh, uh, regular exercise you know whereas uh, whereas a substantial number of medical conditions can be completely prevented or uh, alleviated by exercise and he goes on to say that physical fitness is the cheapest and most effective preventive medicine uh, yet discovered so i would uh, repeat the same thing as tim rocks has said as the most uh, cheapest and most effective preventive medicine and uh, everybody should start their journey sometime irrespective of the baseline fitness and uh, slowly find improvements and enjoy all the psychological benefits as well as real tangible benefits there are many benefits that uh, they are intangible like kicking a bad like smoking or drinking or you know depression is been prescribed for depression as well 
so as a exercise so there are any intangible benefits as well as real benefits that you can add some value to it so i recommend most of the patients as well as doctors you know to uh, start the journey okay well thank you very much dr reddy for joining us on this episode thank you darling thank you dr reddy okay so we'll bring this episode of movement medicine to a close thank you very much for joining us and we'll bring you the next episode very soon